Don't move, miss. Get up against the car, please. E. Wilcox Tapscott, two T's. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What? I thought your job was arresting criminals. Sir. What you're supposed to be doing is protecting us from them, not treating us like them. You see this white collar, I'm easy to spot. I'm into the powder, but I don't do a lot. It's not like I'm homeless or strung out on crack. With the taxes I pay, you should cut me. Write your ticket, fax it to my CPA.
died. Excuse me? You heard what I said. Where's the phone? I am entitled to a phone hey. call. You'll make your call when we're good and ready to let you make your call. And right now you're being processed. Oh, what does that mean? You're going to strip search me in the back room? You got some mouth on you, Lane. This is the way she was the whole way down here. Only noisy one we had. Gotta be one. Is this you, Cassandra Margolis? Is there a space on that form that says who a person works for? Because I think you ought to fill that in first. I think you geniuses ought to know that you have arrested the personal assistant of Richard N. Colhane. Councilman Colhane. Yeah, well, you got one phone call. <clears throat> Officer Quinn. Yes, Captain? I've done some thinking about Patty Spence. What about her? I've decided to see about getting her paroled into a rehab program. Um, there's one in Inglewood for battered women and women with drug problems, and they let Patty keep her baby. I'll call ADA Scott. You mind if I ask you what changed your mind? I made the mistake of running the whole thing by my wife last night, and she sided with you. Thanks. Thanks, Captain. Don't get your hopes up. Captain, this is Stacy Kane. Stacy Kane, Captain Holland. Hi. Roger. Please come in. I appreciate you taking the time to see me. I'm sure you're both pretty busy. Tell us, how can we help you? About two years ago, when I was living in New York, I started receiving fan letters. A guy by the name of Gary Wendell Carver. He had seen me on the soap opera, and he wrote me this long letter telling me that he thought I was very beautiful. I had never received fan mail before, and I was flattered, so I wrote him back, thanking him. He kept writing. At first, it was every couple of weeks. Soon, it was every day. Then he started sending me gifts. What kind of gifts? Um, stuffed animals, um, record albums, books of poetry, a kite. Then, on my birthday, he came to my apartment and refused to leave. What happened? Well, I had him arrested. He was convicted of trespassing. The judge put him on 30 days probation and issued a restraining order forbidding him to get into any contact with me at all. Which only applies in the state of New York. Right. Only now he's in California and he started writing me again. You could go to the marshal's office and get another restraining order. No, but I'm afraid he's going to do something to me before I can get one. I got this this morning. He sent me a vial of blood. Has he ever threatened you? He sent me his blood. Isn't that a threat? Has he ever said that he was going to hurt you? No. He hasn't. Well, I hate to say this, but until he commits a crime, there's nothing we can do. Listen, the crime he's going to commit is murder. Do you understand this? I can go talk to him. No, unless you're prepared to arrest, don't do anything. You're just going to make him mad. I'm sorry. I wish we could help. Yeah, me too. I kind of thought that's what cops were supposed to do. Listen, if you ever think he's about to do something, you call us. Call me. A day does not go by where I don't think he's going to do something. I'm aware that my assistant, Miss Margolis, has some problems. But for your men to arrest her in this manner, it's unconscionable. It was a routine by-bust operation, Councilman. They are doing their job. She's an extremely valuable member of my staff, Chief. I would appreciate a little quid pro quo here. Are you saying she ought to get special consideration just because she works for you? I'm saying I'd like it if the whole incident were completely erased. This young woman is like family to me. I hate to see her reputation ruined because of one youthful misjudgment. Naturally, I'd show my appreciation. Meaning what? Your department has a new budget proposal before the council. Some of my colleagues feel it is excessive, but I'm inclined to vote for it. Heck, I wouldn't even call this a quid pro quo. You'd be doing what's right, and so would I. All right. Does that mean I can tell Miss Margolis the matter has I been said, handled? all right. Good. Gentlemen. Quid pro quo, huh? Sounds like the councilman's getting all the quid he can handle. 
Allen. This girl is responsible for 11 felony arrests. She sold her kid, John. She's charged with the statutory crime of slavery. Now, how can I let her plead that out? Look, you do it all the time. You do it for murderers, you do it for drug dealers. I don't see any reason in the world why you can't do it for her. What is your big personal interest in this? Hmm? I just think maybe she can straighten herself out. Maybe she's even got a shot at getting her baby back. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's what she's looking for? Of course that's what she's looking for. In order for her to get her baby back, she's got to petition the court. And the judge has to grant her custody. Lots of luck. Look, the only chance she has at all is for you to recommend probation. All right. I guess if we're going to let Cole Haynes' secretary go, we can do the same here. What? Who asked you to cut that deal? Kendrick's guy, Osborne. That is stated. Knock, knock. Hi. Want to get some dinner? Can't. Too much work. Come on. You got to eat. Vincent, now that you're not drawing a paycheck from the department, how do you intend to support yourself? Well, I don't know. I figured I'd uh, marry you for your money. Uh, the reason I ask is that we represent a private security firm, and they're doing an important political fundraiser Saturday afternoon at the Pollock Estate in Beverly Hills. I took the liberty of suggesting you for a job. What did I look like? Some academy washout? Some ex-jock or some mini-mall rent-a-cop? You wouldn't be working at a mini-mall. You make more money than you make as a cop. Pass. I'd think about it if I were you. Right now, you're a suspended cop, an indictment for murder. You're not even permitted to carry a gun. Normally, these people wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot pole. Oh, in other words, they're only willing to hire me as a personal favor to you. Right. All right, I'll do it. Now that it's settled, let's get out of here. I can't right now. Trish. Don't let you and me sleep alone tonight. What do you say? We went to bed once, Vincent. Maybe we'll do it again, and maybe not. What's that mean? It means I'm not looking to get into a relationship. Hey, who said anything about a relationship? All I'm saying is, I'm doing you a favor. How about doing one for me? Okay. Come to my apartment at midnight. I don't want to wait till midnight. I want to go to your apartment now. Listen to me. You leave now and let me get my work done. And when I get back to my apartment, I might just have a little surprise for you. What kind of surprise? I have something that I wear. I keep it in the back of my closet. And I like to put it on for special occasions. And this would be a special occasion? Yes. It would. Midnight. People, people, thank you for coming out today. As we hurtled into the last week of this campaign, the polls show that this thing is up for grabs. I can feel in the air, as I think you can too, the winds of change. For too long, we have witnessed the systematic dismantling of this state's preeminence in the fields of education, health care, the environment, issues concerning the poor, the homeless, and the elderly. But well, with your help today, we're going to change all that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the next governor of California, Thomas J. Wagner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you. You know, I've just spent the week crisscrossing the state, and I wish I could tell you that I had been addressing the issues, but I haven't. Because tragically, in this day and age of, of multi-million dollar television campaigns, I've had to spend my week begging for money. Having a good time, miss? Detective Vincent LaRusso, meet Mitchell Sackheim. Yeah, how you doing? I was telling Mitchell about your case. He's convinced it would make a great film. Right, this is him. 
Okay, yeah, we should sit down and have a conversation sometime. I'm, I'm serious about that. Sure, whatever you want. Uh, Vincent, right? Right. Vincent, you know, we have a 5.30 wedding reception at Chinois. You would be doing me a profound personal favor, Vincent, if you could manage to round up my car like now. Yeah, sure, no problem. White, 500, SA. Winning's never been easy, and winning's never been more expensive than it is now. Give us your dollars. Give us your support. Maestro. One, two, three, three. Grant me, if you will, your kind attention. A moment to address the work at hand. This business of election day approaches. And with your contribution, I'm prepared to make a stand. Dear constituents, doms and gentlemen, welcome to the campaign trail. Where statesmanship's reduced to shaking you down. Oh yeah. Well, it takes a mountain of green just to move that kind of machine. Oh, money makes the wheels go round. Hey, how you doing? Hi. I think I might owe you an apology. What for? For acting like you guys were to blame. I was rude and I was wrong. Hey, as far as I'm concerned, you got nothing to apologize for. Well, since I disagree, would you be willing to let me buy you dinner Monday night? I think I'd be willing to let you do that, yeah. Good. <laughs> well, I'll call you. Great. Hey, Francine? Yeah. Hi. Uh, get me a, uh, a printout and a CII rap sheet on a Gary Wendell carbon. Okay? Right. John? Sir, I could have come to your office. Ha, no problem. I got your message in my car. I understand you're pretty steamed right about now. That's right. John, I'd like you to understand something. When this particular city councilman intervened at this particular time, Chief Kendrick felt and wisely, I believe, that he had no choice but to comply. I assume that's what it took for a solid arrest to be dismissed. With all due respect, it was a penny ante bust. That's all we're talking about. No, sir, that's not all we're talking about. We're also talking about certain people in this city who believe that getting busted for dope is always negotiable, especially if you're white and you have the right connections. We're also talking about cops who start thinking, what the hell am I going out there for, risking my life to make collars if the suits and the squints upstairs are just going to kick them loose anyway? If Councilman Culhane votes against the chief's budget proposal because we prosecute his girlfriend, that affects the morale of this city's 8,000 cops a lot more than letting it go. It wasn't even a question. With all due respect, sir, I still don't like it. Well, I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. Ms. Spence, uh, for purposes of judicial economy, we will be combining the disposition of the criminal charges against you with a hearing on your petition for custody. Your Honor, the uh, public defender's office is only authorized to provide representation with respect to the criminal matter. Yes, I understand that, Mr. Law. I've received a recommendation from the district attorney in that regard. Uh, Ms. Spence, uh, you will be representing yourself on this matter of custody, is that right? Uh, yeah. Yes, Your Honor, that's right. Well, then, let's get started. I'll hear from the Department of Social Services first. Your Honor, the Department of Social Services doesn't feel this woman is in any position to be asking for custody. And why is that? She sold this little girl. She didn't know what would happen to her, and she didn't care. That's not true, Your Honor. Miss Spence? But that's not true. Miss Spence, you will have an opportunity to tell your side, but you cannot interrupt. This is also a drug addict we're dealing with, Your Honor. She says she wants to go straight. All right. Drug addicts say that all the time. Drug addicts lie. Drug addicts only care about one person, and that's themselves. 
My department's interest is solely in the health and well-being of this child. Putting her back with this woman, in our opinion, is unwarranted and extremely dangerous. Ms. Spence? I know that what you got to look out for is what's good for Crystal. And I know that Mrs. Ionello doesn't agree with this, but I really think that what is best for her is to be with me. Yes, well, you're not exactly a model parent. You will concede to that. No, Judge, I'm not a model parent. I just know my daughter. I know her better than anyone else in this world knows her. I know that she loves her mom. Well, a little child usually does. Right, but not every little child gets love back. And mine did. Mine did. And yet, what you did was throw her to the wolves. Yeah, Your Honor, I know. And one day, I, I want her to forgive me for that. But uh, I want to be a good mother, and I want to raise her upright. And one day, I, I want her to forgive me. And one day, you might also want to get high. I want to get high every day. Judge, I am an addict. Tell me why this court should trust an addict with the life of a little child. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe just because sometimes people get a break and they end up turning their lives around. The only thing that is getting me through the day right now is the chance that I could get her back. The, the only thing that I have to hold on to is my little girl. And I know I don't deserve her. But uh, I'm asking you to please give her back to me anyway. We'll convene tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll rule on this matter then. Next case. Let's go. Who is it? It's the police, Mr. Carver. Open up the door. What is it? I'm going to talk to you, Gary. you want to talk to me about what you're doing is making this young woman very uncomfortable that's between me and her no I'm here to tell you it's not when someone is being harassed as a police officer I have an obligation to investigate if in the course of investigating I become convinced that the individual responsible constitutes a threat I have an obligation to keep an eye on that individual what's that mean you're gonna be watching me like a hawk you have no right to pry into my personal affairs. I'm not doing anything illegal. Tell me something. Are you under any kind of psychiatric care at the present time? Because if you're not, I think you should be. <laughs> you just don't understand. What don't I understand? You don't understand about us. Hey, Gary, the first thing you got to do is stop thinking about yourself and Stacey Kane as us. How could I? Well, somehow you're going to have to find a way, buddy. See, you built this whole thing up in your mind. And unless you let it go, I've got a feeling you're going to try to do something real stupid. You know it's her birthday on Monday? No, I didn't know. Well, most people around the time of their birthday are Gary, particularly... just remember what I said. You never learn a lesson. You make the same mistake twice. It's you who's making the same mistake twice, ma'am. We caught her buying at the same location, Captain. Do we have to go through this again? What's the point? You know I'm just going to call my councilman. Come on, miss. Let's go. Come on. I get a call. Don't tell me you're not even going to give me a call this time. No, you'll get a call. You make it from my office. But before you pick up the phone, I think you're going to want to hear what I have to say. Start talking. First time was for free. This time, you're going down. What does that mean? Well, what it means, it means jail time.
Guaranteed. I want to see to it personally. Well, you can take that up with the councilman. Get to hell with your councilman. Look, you got lucky the first time. But you rub our nose in it, lady. And this is what happens. No. No what? No, you're not going to do this to me. Why not? Because why would you settle for busting me when you could bust the city councilman I buy for? Are you willing to roll over on him? Yeah. That means you're going to have to testify in court. I'll do it. Okay. When and where? Tomorrow. I'll set it up. One million six for two infrared equipped Bell Rangers, nine hundred thousand dollars for three onward assault vehicles. Your Honor, this is sounding like a shopping list for the Pentagon, not the LAPD. Hell, man, LA's got a landmass bigger than some of those Arab countries, and look at the firepower they got. More to the point, Councilman, I believe we had a deal. Well, I'm trying to live up to it, but how do I sell the rest of the council? That's your problem. But the clock's ticking, Councilman. I want your full support on this. The way this thing stands, that's asking a lot. Well, it's my understanding you're getting a lot. I would hate to see your personal assistance brush with the law, cost you and your wife and your children some potentially damaging publicity. Chief Kendrick, you can count on me. Your Honor, could I have 30 seconds of your time? Of course. I'll wait outside. Nice to see you, Warren. Thank you, Mayor. What can I do for you, Roger? I wanted to thank you on behalf of the entire force for your support. I also wanted to apologize to you. For what? My emotions got the better of me the other night. Well, it was a very emotional situation. I, I just wanted you to know that as far as I'm concerned, nothing has changed between us. Nothing? I mean, you're still the mayor and I'm your chief of police. And what happened between us the other night doesn't change anything. Do you regret what happened? Oh, no, ma'am. On the contrary. I've been tossing in my bedroll every night since, thinking about you. Us. Me too. All right, you got the... Hi. What's up? I wanted to see how you were doing. I'm doing okay. I'm just hanging in, you know. I'm thinking about writing a letter for you, Patty. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I wanted to just talk to you for a minute before I did. I'm done with drugs, Vicky. I really am. Are you? My little girl means a lot more to me than smoking crack. What if you don't get her back? I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. Well, you better. Because if you can't get straight without her, she's better off without you. Listen, I want to stop doing drugs. Well, that isn't going to happen because you get your daughter back. And that isn't going to happen because you move to another city or find a new group of friends or anything else. The only way to stop doing drugs is to stop doing drugs. I know. I know. You know, I'm feeling a little guilty right now. Why? Because I'm really attracted to you, and I know at least part of the reason is that you make me feel safe. Well, listen, I'm glad you feel attracted to me for whatever reason. 
It just never lets up, you know? This guy has forced himself into my life and he won't go away. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I'm always aware that he's out there somewhere just thinking about me, fantasizing about me, stalking me. I have a suggestion to make. What's that? Let me stay at your place tonight. That's a bit above and beyond the call of duty, don't you think? I know today's your birthday, Stacy. If he does show up, I want to be there because then we got him. <laughs> Make a wish. I can't believe it's so strange somehow. I've come so far, don't stop. Dream is but a step away. I live my life just to be. Put your hands on top of your head, Gary. You're under arrest. Listen, wait a Put minute. Put the flowers down, Gary. They're for Stacy. Put them down. I love her. This is not what I asked you to do. Now, is it? Get on the horn with him and get it. Get it here now. He's right there. Hi. Congratulations. I hear the DA's decided not to file charges. Is there somewhere we can talk? Come on. Talk. I want you to know that I didn't plan what happened last night. Yeah, right. All I knew, he was in my house, and I was scared. Scared of what? I was standing right there. He was under arrest. For what? Breaking and entering? How long could you have put him away for that? Maybe one, maybe two years? And then he gets out, and I have to go through this all again? No. Mm -mm. So, you set me up hoping I'd kill him, and then when I didn't, you killed him yourself. It wasn't like that. Yes, it was. You murdered a man, and you did it behind my badge. What do you want me to say? Nothing. Look, 
Maybe when things get back to normal, we could spend some time together and figure this all out. You really see things ever getting back to normal where you and I are concerned? I guess not. It's the first honest thing you've said. Under arrest. Whoa! Jeez, what kind of crazy invasion of privacy is this? I'd advise you to shut it, Cole Hain. Give me a towel, for God's sake. Read him his rights, Franklin. You know what you did? Yes, sir. I don't think you do. Tell him, Ozzie. You may have cost this department millions in equipment and pay raises. Millions. It's bad enough you disregard the deal we made on the girlfriend. How the hell could you bust Cohane? Because they were rubbing our noses in it. I understand deals. I make them myself, but there's a limit. Now, you give me the finger once, I'll look the other way, but not twice. Damn it! Now, if you want my badge, that's fine, because if I can't be a real cop, then what's the point anyway? Man's right, Ozzy. Keep your bad, son. We need more like you in this department. So, Miss Spence, another night without drugs, huh? Yes, Your, yes, yes, Your Honor. Well, how do you feel? I feel okay. I mean, I feel about the same as I did yesterday. Well, I have listened to you very closely. I have also read statements on your behalf by uh, Captain John Hollander and Officer Victoria Quinn of the Los Angeles Police Department. And I have also considered the nature of your crime. That said, I have decided to give you another shot. 
mostly because there are two lives that stand to benefit if you can manage to turn your life around. This is your sentence. Three years probation, confinement to the RNH Bullock Rehabilitation Center for six months, at which time you will be reevaluated by me. I'm also granting your petition and awarding you custody of your daughter. Said custody to be supervised by the administrator of the treatment facility. Said custody to be reviewed monthly, revocable at any time. Your Honor, my agency strongly objects to this. I understand that. With all due respect, awarding this woman even supervised custody is wholly irresponsible. Ms. Ionello, one more word and I'll hold you in contempt. The Sheriff's Department will transport the defendant. Department of Social Services will produce the infant female, Crystal Jennifer Spence, and deliver said infant to the defendant. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Case dismissed. How about this? I'll go with you to New York. I mean, you know, I grew up there. I can show you around. I'm going to New York on business, and I'm going alone. This doesn't mean you're not going to see anybody else while you're there. Listen, if I want to see someone, I'll see them. Nobody's ever put chains on me. Let me be the first. No. Okay. I see. You're a little bored with the usual run of uh, attorneys and producers and big shot agents like that guy at the party. So you decided you're gonna get yourself a cop. I'm your cop. What's the matter? Nobody ever said no to you before? Nobody who had me as turned around as you do. Well, maybe you better cut your losses right here and now. Because if what you want is someone who's available to play mommy, servant, or whore, depending on your mood, you're going to be real disappointed with me. Maybe I don't want to give up that easy. Is that a threat? No. Good. Because I want you to know that if you ever made or even implied a threat to me, I would never see you again. Now, I've got to finish packing, wash my hair, get dressed and get to the airport. I'd like it if you'd leave.
to spot I'm into the powder But I don't do a lot It's not like I'm homeless Or strung out on crack With the taxes I pay You should cut me some slack But don't mess With my pursuit of happiness 